Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, it's 1902. Um, the uh, meeting to the constitute with quorum. First order of business is approval of the agenda. Um, can I have a motion? Thanks. And a second uh, discussion. This being the open meeting agenda. Seeing none. Peter? Right. Uh, we need to add as 8B, as in Bob 2. Bob 2. Would be the mayor. Uh, number 2, Metro Area OCP from the CSC earlier today. Yeah, that'll be a recommendation for the community. Mm -hmm. Metro Electoral Area AOCP. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Oh, and uh, additional uh, grounds. under additional grounds, um, 91 C and E. Remind us. These uh, C is uh, labor relations, essentially. E is um, acquisition or disposition of property. Okay. Everybody good with that? They yeah. were added actually uh, to the version on the um, on the website calendar and on the notice boards, but after we received the printed uh, copies. So, yes. uh, do we need something for the transom uh, offer that came on the table separately? No, that was just no, got in the budget. That's, that's that's a, a, it's it'll yeah, come in the next budget. Then. Yeah. Yeah. CSC. Right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so with those amendments, can I have uh, all those in favor and opposed? That carries. Public participation, this is where anybody may address council for two minutes on a topic on the agenda. And those are the specifics. Brigida? Thanks, that's great. We'll keep that for the records. Uh, typically, we don't uh, we don't uh, hold ourselves obligated to respond immediately. I, I know that. But uh, Nai, would you just care to bring us up to speed? I know you've been uh, holding some <coughs> discussions on the topic. Is yeah, there anything I, you can I, tell? I have met with the CAO, and we do have some concerns with this, and we need to uh, uh, reassess and reevaluate 
our position in moving forward. Okay, thanks. So I, I can assure you nothing's been decided. Uh, we will not do anything precipitate uh, from the Council's uh, perspective, and this is very much on our radar, so nothing will happen without our say-so. Uh, this and came to... Well, you know, that's obviously part of yeah. the thing. It's, yeah. it's got to be a community consultation yes. thing. Yeah. Um, right. that's, that's really so, yeah. fear not. We're, go we're going to do this right. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks very much for coming. So, any other public commentary? Uh, seeing none, we'll move on to delegations. Rod, welcome. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'd also like to introduce uh, two other people that are members of the delegation. Uh, Emmanuel Oshina from the Pulling Together Canoe Society, and Bruce Ballings a former member of the Canoe Society, and former New Westminster Police, and most importantly, former member of the President of Lions Bay. Once um, a Lions Bay, are always a Lions Bay. <laughs> um, while I'm just getting this uh, going here, Um, quickly, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm also on the, on the planning committee for this year's Pulling Together Canoe Journey, which is anticipated to go from, from Seashelf down to Vancouver. And uh, uh, on the civilian side, I work for Metro Vancouver, nothing to do with OCPs, but I'm the emergency manager responsible for electoral area, which is that lovely little area we all love between here and Boston. We've got your maps right here. Quickly. Um, We'll go over a brief history of the event and the society, um, what we're planning for this year, some notable participants, and some very quick requests of Lions Bay Council. Uh, the journey began in 1997 with something called Vision Quest, which was the RCMP and First Nations. It started up by Prince Rupert area and went all down the coast of BC with First Nations people and RCMP members in canoes together, paddling side by side to gain understanding of how each other uh, looks at things. That was so successful that in 2001, it was reiterated and became uh, the Pulling Together Canoe Journey, and is now an official not-for-profit society in the province of BC. Our most recent journeys, I'm not gonna read them all out to you, but as you can see, they're, they're quite varied from uh, the Upper Fraser Valley to the Shushwap area and the eastern side of Vancouver Island. Our vision is to lead the way in the elimination of prejudices and stereotypes. Big core value is always fun. The rest of the are, are also important to us, especially cultural diversity. And the whole mission of Pulling Together is to build understanding between public service agencies, not just police, but other public service agencies as well, and the Aboriginal people by canoeing the traditional highway together. It's best, uh, I can best describe the, 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 the canoe journey in the society with a quick video. project to enhance and improve the relationship of First Nations people and police. Pulling Together has visited well over a hundred First Nations communities, both British Columbia and back in Ontario. So much of an analogy in life is the canoe, the canoe family, uh, pulling together, so to say, is we always have to always pull our own weight. The canoe doesn't move, you don't get to camp at night, you don't eat, you don't do anything without everybody pulling together. When we put young people into canoes with RCMP or with VPD or with conservation, we give them opportunities to engage in dialogue and to actually work together to pull together. This year on the journey we have 23 canoes out there. There's more than 300 and some odd participants. We're up in the Shushwap heading to Kamloops. Awakening the Spirit, this year's theme, talks about the fact that the Shushwapnik are a canoe nation. 
and they forgot that for a long time. So it's time to wake up and start to realize that and to exercise the right to be on that water. That was a life skipping for the first time. Yeah. It's an experience I'll never forget the rest of my life. Why is that? I've never been near water, now I'm starting to love water. I understand water now. We have five communities, five Chicago communities that never had a big canoe. Now we have our own. So there's nothing stopping us from going out in this lake anytime we want to or any of the lakes that are close in our area. And now that we've been out there, people will recognize us and know what's going on. Every time we stop and pull in somewhere, we're having more and more people joining us and greeting us on the beach. some of the new ones to have fun out there you know it's not all about putting the head down and just pulling forward but talking to each other as you're going through the waters and getting to know people i've had enough of this guy man i'm out of here <laughs> there are so many activities going on i especially enjoyed the karaoke the storytelling is awesome you get to hear different stories from a different culture other than your own in the water there's especially a lot of water fights and to be able to like cool yourself down but have fun at the same time. And I've had people come up to me like, I had no idea that I, I, I'd be sitting here talking to a cop and we have so much in common. Very impressed, shock, awe, all that stuff. When you're on a canoe and you work all day and you come off at the end of the day and you know that you've worked, you know, when people are telling you you did a good job, you know, you can't help but have a shift in attitude. I try to sit with somebody different at supper time just to, to build those relationships too. I really don't think I'd be sitting here if there wasn't a canoe. I wouldn't be an auxiliary constable with the RCMP if I can't thank the canoe for that. For those that don't know, there's over 200 nations here in BC, and this has given us a chance to kind of get out to a lot of the more rural areas, and it really opens you up to understand what it, what it really means to be a Canadian citizen. It's a lot more deeply rooted than what we've been told. I want you to use your own imagination and travel to the land of the native. This is the culture that our ancestors tried to suppress. And yet all these years later, this is the culture that is magically bringing us back together. Sing it in your heart! They kept the embers alive, and now it's coming back. These people are trusting us one more time. New people are my new relatives. I'm take you like my relatives. We're not in the past anymore. It still hurts, yes. But we're here still so many years later, and we're not going to give up. We're going to not only teach our young ones, but other cultures as well, what goes on in our culture. I can think back to when my community was first formed, and that's when I really got back to my culture. Starting to learn the language, learning to sing and drum and, and dance, being part of a dance group up north. Who knows where this canoe will take people? And by the time we leave a few days from now, we feel like we're leaving home. Now that I'm out here, I just feel like I'm at home. It's a journey. Journey to find out that you're a human. That we're all pretty much the same. Every time I drive by this area, I know that I'm welcome here. My hands will go up to them. I will can tell my kids later on and my grandkids later on if we paddle the journey here. Humanizing. Togetherness.
Wisconsin. So, anyway, that tells the story of the, of the pulling together canoe journey in, in, a, in a quick snapshot. This year, the plan is tentatively from the Sunshine Coast, ending in Vancouver, visiting Seashell, Gibson's, Potlatch Creek, um, Squamish, Porto Cove, Horseshoe Bay, Ambleside Park, and finally ending in downtown Vancouver at the Navy Station at Dead Man's Island. And of course, because of the paddling distances, we need to have lunch stops on the way because uh, we can only paddle so fast and need to have to refill en route. Those are the, that's the tentative route right there. And as you can see, we've planned on a lunch stop in Lions Bay, partly because, or main, actually mainly because it's halfway between Porto Cove and the next next stop at, uh, at Horseshoe Bay. It's the only suitable beach um, is your park. Uh, beach Park down uh, by the marina. Um, as you know, the whole topography of, of how it sounds is very steep, so there are very few places we can land. And also, um, Lions Bay has a bit of a history with the Squamish Nation as well, and uh, we'd like to, uh, to come and visit. Um, we're going to be camping in various different locations. I'm not going to read them all out. The interests of time. We have some significant sponsors already on board for this year's journey. CN is providing some major financial support to us in the, in the five figures and uh, a lot of in-kind support from a lot of municipalities, uh, corporations and federal government agencies and of course the, the Squamish Nation. We're anticipating uh, participation by 250 to 400 uh, First Nations people plus 150 or so uh, public service agency members. There's a three quarters chance that the Prime Minister will be attending at least a couple of days on the journey. Um, we have some good intelligence on that, uh, mainly because one of the society members happens to run this protective detail and gets FaceTime with him. So uh, she's managed to, to try to get him into the schedule. We have a very good likelihood that the Lieutenant Governor of BC is going to be attending part of it. She's uh, stated she doesn't want to attend the Vancouver end of things, but would rather uh, attend uh, the further up Howe Sound portion of things. Minister of National Defense, the Commander of the Royal Canadian Navy, and uh, confirmed uh, two police chiefs, probably uh, a few extras as well. Um, due to their schedules, they may or may not be present when the journey passes through Lion Bay. We have some very simple requests of council tonight. We would like permission from the village of Lions Bay for the use of Beach Park for a lunch stop on July 13th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And from talking with, uh, with staff uh, a couple of weeks ago, we understand that uh, booms are placed around the beach to keep boats away from the swimming area. Um, part of that request would be we'd like to be able to remove the boom to allow the canoes into the beach. Any support boats, um, read safety boats that are provided by public service agencies, would, tie, would, would go into the marina and so no motorized vessels would go into the beach area. We're looking at potentially 300 paddlers in 25 or so canoes arriving at your beach now. There. So that's, that's the request. Um, it would almost entail pretty well exclusive use of beach park. However, because this is a, a journey of cooperation, um, residents of Lions Bay are more than welcome to come down and interact. We would also like to request that if you do grant us permission to, to, to use your park, that uh, mayor and council um, are more than happy to come, would be more than happy to have you down to, uh, to help greet the paddlers on, on arrival and uh, get to know some of the people that take part in this journey. <clears throat> now, now, now the nasty one. Um, this is not connected to the first two to the first two requests. It's just a nice to have, but if you don't ask, you don't get. Um, we'd like to, we'd like council to consider showing some financial support for the journey by perhaps contributing to hosting the lunch that happens in Lions Bay. And uh, that's our presentation. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for listening to us. Thanks very much. Um, now, typically we have 10 minutes for these things, but because this is a big project, we'll 
uh, on the nod, uh, uh, waive that requirement because I'm sure Council has questions. I know I certainly have quite a few. Uh, but I'll open it up to, uh, to you guys first. Jim? Greg? No? No? I don't believe I have any questions. I okay. Yeah. So um, the boom is, is a major deal to move. Uh, Nye, what's the budget uh, on an annual basis? Uh, right now on an annual basis, the budget is for uh, removal. So that entails unhooking with a boat, moving them over to the launch, and using their heavy equipment to lift the logs out. Yeah. I don't believe removal of the boom would be a significant ask. So it's we would just, just float it off to the side? Correct, for two hours, and then have a boat go back and float it in. Okay, so uh, the marina does that for us, and, and what was the first effort cost? Is it four grand a year? Uh, the first cost is about four grand a year. That's complete removal. That that involves lifting the logs out, Taking storing them, yeah, okay. et cetera. Now, the reason I bring it up is because there is a kayak pass-through hmm. in, in the boom, but that's one at a time. And I assume that you'd actually want everybody coming in more or less at the same time. Generally, uh, the canoes will arrive one at a time. So, so, I mean, so it is. So it is potential that we could use uh, any pass through. When I talked to staff a couple of weeks ago, um, they they just said the whole bay was boomed off. So we weren't really sure that there would be a pass through or anything like that. But I saw the kayak storage when I was down there. Mm. And and between two of the logs, they are actually held apart by a structure under the water to allow kayaks at least through. What's the draft of these things? Six inches. Yeah. I think, okay, Carl. I think the issue there is the, the gap in there is good for a kayak, but the width of your ca canoes looks rather large. Yeah, so yeah these are the chains. three to four feet wide. Yeah, but uh, as Nice says, we would just be floating the boom out of the way. We wouldn't actually be doing anything more significant. That the boys, we just buoy the, the anchor points. Okay, so that could be done. Uh, in terms of the lunch, um, do we just hand over the dosh, or do, uh, do we actually do the work as well? Um, I'm going to defer to Emanuela. <laughs> <laughs> on that because she's uh, more experienced with the logistical support of, uh, of the journeys. I, I do planning for the, for the water safety aspect primarily and I'm good at talking to people so I get to, I'm also the junior member of the board so I get to do the talking so. Take the arrows. Thank you, um, thank you for, for, even, uh, uh, for having us here and being able to give a presentation. Um, just, I've been involved for 13 years. Um, and I've been bringing youth from Vancouver, East End, Vancouver for 13 years. So um, I see the impact of this every day. Um, and in regards to food, preferably if it can be provided by you guys and made, but made whatever the case may be, that would be great. If that's if that's um, too much, then yes, we would uh, we would take the cash and we would we would be able to do it ourselves. Um, just uh, I'll tell you one of the biggest things that we ever got um, was having a one community that came up with a bunch of pizzas. Um, remember that year that they, they just came up with a bunch of pizzas yes. and everybody went nuts. So just as an example of something that's um, easy to put together. And, and wouldn't, uh, 1500 bucks, that's 100 pizzas. Yeah. Well, okay, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the one issue I had, the first request, that, you know, when it first came across the transom was, what do you mean uh, our people aren't allowed into the beach park? But I'm glad to hear you say you would welcome the opportunity for, for people to come down and say hello. Um, so we could certainly talk about sort of the, the, you know, it's not for swimming, it's come down and meet the canoers for two hours on a Thursday. It is the middle of, of the holiday, so, you know, the, the beach, you know, in the middle of July, it's used. So, but you, you're not opposed to a little bit of uh, mingling? And We're more than happy to, to, to welcome members of any community we pass through. Okay, great. The only, the only thing that I'm sorry, but you can just add is we probably want, would bring in extra porta potties. So now that was going to be my very next question. So you supply the porta potties? We will provide any additional services that, that, are, that are needed for our people, and we will clean up after our people. Yeah. Okay, and how much vehicle space do you need? How many vehicles? I don't think we're even going to need any vehicles, will we? No, there really won't be a vehicle stop for that. No. no. I think we're going to try and name it just for the, for the canoes to come through. We might have people that are going through because camp is camp being moved that day. Yeah, but you don't yes. take the camping equipment on the canoes, right? No. No, no, no. We have <coughs> land crews. So but you wouldn't come through Lions Bay for that. But the land crew, the people that are on land, they're doing the camping, will be passing by, but I don't think they'll stop. One thing that I have found in the, in the three years that I've been involved in, in this journey is that regardless of what we promise, 
the individual canoe families will do whatever they want to do. And that day we're moving the main camp from Squamish to Ambleside Park in West Vancouver. So they will be passing through Lions Bay on the highway and if they know the lunch stop is here, some of them may come down. So hopefully, okay. well, we, could hopefully we can discourage that, but we can't prevent that. We're not talking about a whole bunch of extra people. Now, have you considered um, Brunswick Beach? Um, <clears throat> yes, Brunswick Beach is a possibility. Our, our first choice was sort of uh, was Beach Park because it does have some washroom facilities there. It's a nice sandy beach and it's fairly easily accessible, fairly easy to find. Um, but I would not rule out Brunswick Beach. We're very much in the initial planning stages of this. Well, um, as you see on the map, Brunswick is a lot bigger than Lions Bay. It's actually sandier uh, and has fewer logs. Lions Bay, we, we do clean the logs out uh, every early spring, but they're still logs. Um, and I don't even know. I guess the logs are all above the high water mark mm -hmm. by the time we clear them up. Yeah, okay, so that wouldn't be an issue. Is, the, is there public access from the land side to bring down porta potties? And yes. Yeah, there, there's a turnaround right there. Um, there's not any public parking though, but you wouldn't need it. You know, your trucks would drop off the things and then they'd go and stage a little bit up on the highway. I know I'm pointing to a map with no specifics. So, I mean, that is something you may want to consider. The marina isn't there. I would say that our, our um, washroom facilities couldn't handle four and a half, uh, 450 people. It's a septic system. Uh, it would have to be closed, so I wouldn't re rely on that because um, it would get overwhelmed. Oh, most definitely. It, it would be flushing raw sewage into the, into the, uh, this, the, no, it, it can't handle uh, 400 no, people we'll, in two hours. We'll in yeah. So, I mean, from that perspective, it doesn't matter, but the marina, no, you'd have to make arrangements with the marina, that's private business, obviously, uh, for uh, bringing in the power uh, craft, but that's fine. But so don't lose sight of that. Um, that's a little more natural. It's much wider. But it's not Lions Bay Beach Park. So I, I'm pointing with my finger at Lions Bay Beach Park. But yes, as I'm you, looking over the corner. But at as, as you see, so. Brunswick is much bigger. Um, there is one small issue that on the that end, um, that's it's frequented by, let's call them nature lovers. Um, very natural, uh, clothing optional, and so that may not be suitable. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. So um, at this stage, we're gathering information only. I think those were the questions I had. My main, my main hurdle was this: uh, the community um, having to absent themselves for the time. But I'm glad to hear that's not the case. Um, we will add this to the agenda for discussion. What's your uh, drop dead date for a decision? Call it around May. Oh, lots of time. Lots of time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Folks, is that it? Staff? Peter? No? Pam? You good? Okay. Thank you very much for, uh, for your consideration. Have, I'm, I'm Bruce Bollingall from Horseshoe Bay. I've been involved with the journey since the canoe was almost invented. Um, one of the most, it's very powerful medicine on the water. One of the most spectacular things that I, I was a police officer for 40 years. I was on one of, one of the first journeys, and there was a very troubled youth from Saskatchewan that had run away and come out to, out to Vancouver. Very angry. His mom had been murdered, and nobody seemed to care. Very, very angry. We took him out on the journey, and I watched this angry boy evolve into a, a fine young man, and it was all with, with, with what happened on the journey. That's how powerful it is. And I, I've seen it with other youth, too, but this one just really stands out in my mind because yeah, it's a pretty amazing experience to be because it really is a journey of, of growth for, for everybody. I don't think anybody here would dispute that it's a, an immensely valuable undertaking in, in terms of, uh, I wish I could get involved, but uh, in terms of lines. Well, you can be. You're welcome to join us in you the canoe, just let us know. I have to be a peace officer. <laughs> Maybe I am. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 you don't. Okay, that's another discussion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can make it over to me. <laughs> yeah, probably. Squamish, you can probably jump in the canoe in Squamish, and you can come in Squamish. Okay, well, I'll take that as an invitation. So, thank you for that. Uh, as far as the presentation, thanks very much for coming. Much appreciated. Answered all the questions I had. Thank you. Do we need a short recess? <coughs> Just a couple of minutes. Sean can, we get the, can we get some air in here? Yeah. Thank you, guys.
Okay, so we we'll just take a motion of recess. Uh, all in favour? No, 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 carried. Okay, returning from recess at uh, 32. So, Peter, in light of the discussion that we've just seen, uh, does that just go on a future uh, agenda for resolution and discussion? Discussion and resolution? Uh, well, I think. Uh, well, we can do it this this meeting. Yeah, I mean, whether you want to talk about it further at this meeting or whether you want to refer it to uh, a future meeting and whether you want any additional information brought forward, uh, we're all ears. Well, we can bring it in new business. We'd have to uh, we'd have to take a motion to amend the agenda one more time. But uh, if you if we've seen enough, it's obviously been in the package. Yeah. Are you prepared to debate it? Sure. Okay, so when we get to new business, we'll take a motion to amend the agenda one more time and discuss it then. Okay, good. Um, approval of the minutes of the meeting of 24th of January. Can I have a motion? Thanks. And second, um, any discussion? I had none. So all in favor of uh, approval of those minutes, thanks. And opposed? That carries. Uh, business arising. I'm not going to say this time. I know they say this every time. How do we do this? <laughs> okay. But we still haven't seen the... Um, yeah, well, you've seen one iteration, iteration of it, but um, the uh, last last meeting was just uh, some correspondence items for staff to do, and, and there were, I've, I've got them highlighted here anyway. Fine. So, uh, But uh, with respect to business arising, I would refer you to... Um, Page 23, page 23, under 8D, <coughs> uh, we had a motion that staff be directed to prepare the water rates by law with a 6% increase, 0% for sewer, and 6% decrease in solid waste utility fees. Uh, just a heads up that uh, the CFO will refer to this later in, in the meeting. Okay. Um, and under correspondence, <coughs> let you know that the letter to Mr. Fleming was sent, the letter to Mr. Schneider was sent, as was the letter to the residents of Brunswick Beach. Yeah, we saw those, good. Um, and then we have 12A, uh, was a resolution that Eileen Wilkie be appointed to be a member of the Emergency Plan Steering Committee. And so we're wondering, uh, would you, will we revert back to yourself as the fourth member of that steering committee? Yep. Yeah. I don't think I was ever off. Well, we didn't rescind that appointment, so uh, I mean, I think, I think I think what was stated at the time was that he would remain as as um, ex officio, ex officio, mm -hmm. um, but might as well whatever. No, let's just okay. Yeah, it's a, All right. We don't need to rescind that appointment because it's it's moot, obviously. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, and then the following. Uh, question was added to the IRRs, so they're there for today, today's meeting. So okay, good. So those are matters arising, uh, business arising. Thanks. Moving on to unfinished business, I'd like to uh, move that we table that item in its entirety mm -hmm. in the interest of time. Uh, we had a pretty full-time discussion uh, last meeting. Would anybody care to second that motion? Thanks. And uh, any discussion? So all in favor of the motion, which is to table discussion to a future meeting? And opposed? Okay, so we'll move on to um, staff reports. Uh, the first one being uh, the <coughs> meeting notes on the zoning and public information meeting for the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no need to repeat anything here. Mm -hmm. uh, this has gone around. Anything anybody cares to? Starting on page 35. This will then just feed into the discussion as the next round of the zoning bylaw comes comes up. I mean, I, I submitted some written, uh, comments and uh, I wouldn't call them corrections, more just uh, um, comments, I suppose. Well, this could also be your opportunity to um, have further discussion <coughs> about these items, to talk about your perceptions of the meeting <coughs> and to provide staff with some direction with respect to future iterations of the draft bylaw, uh, you know, in terms of giving staff direction on where you want to go with short-term rentals, uh, where you want to go with parking, those are two of the items on which uh, you did a bit of a straw poll, um, and 
Um, you know, there are a few other areas that uh, I thought you might want to mm. um, have some discussion about. But if you'd rather defer that to um, a subsequent meeting, um, I can certainly, there, are, there were certain things, certain areas where staff, namely myself, uh, plans to flesh out some of these things and you know I've just I've had some con uh, conversations with the planning consultant about um, the subsequent iterations yeah, what of, are we of the draft do about bylaw yeah. um, but uh, you know a couple of the things on which you um, um, pulled the, the members of the people who attended the meeting um, are areas where you might want to have a, have give a some guidance now. Give some guidance, or, or le at least let me know your thoughts on on these things. Yeah, what's your pleasure on that one? Uh, I I don't feel that I'm prepared to discuss that really. Um, you know, quite frankly, I'd like to see a recommendation as to what makes the most sense as a result of you know best practice and uh, community reaction. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly about STRs. Uh, the options were equally supported, so I mean that's really no. I mean, well, I'm Canadian. Yeah. yeah, a third pro, a third against, a third undecided. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not how. That's not how I read it. If you if you look at the STO, close enough. I mean, yeah. no, not at all. You got, you got. Uh, how many people say prohibit? Ten. How many people allow? Fifteen plus permit in the principal residence, but prohibit in the suite. So you're still permitting. So that's add five. That's twenty. Create safe specific zoning. Oh, that's that's in favor. So that's twenty five, and consider temporary use. Yeah, but these are all the same people. <laughs> these, I don't. Well, not I not guess it's not necessarily. Not necessarily. like forty if, to ten. If it was Carl who was telling me that these were the numbers here, I mean, for me, from where I was sitting beside Councillor Green, whose eyesight is worse than mine, I would be uh, hard pressed to say that fifteen people actually were in favor of it. I'd like to. There were some people over there. Some not, no. I think the numbers are about right, but it's by no means. Uh, and it could have been the sample. I, I it could have been the sample pulled. of the it day. Could have been yeah. Some people raising their hands more than once. I agree with that. Okay, <laughs> so point sure. being that, and I think Carl said this somewhere along here. Council does know the community is going to make the call on this one. I mean, I don't. Well, now may be the time, but yeah. I, I don't. I, I certainly don't feel prepared to make that. Uh, uh, Wait, today. So, so oh, no, no. <laughs> not, not so much the decision. Mm. Provide guidance. <clears throat> I guess, I guess, from my perspective, uh, for me to engage with the planning consultant, mm. and you know, if if our perception of the reading of the room was that, you know, people seem to be okay provided that there's regulation around it and it's not just a free for all, then we would probably come back with a, a fairly extensive scheme wrapped around number five, which would be. TUPs, but the first go around with council, we weren't that keen on the TUPs. <coughs> because so of the difficulty in enforcement. Well, it might not be that difficult, but I just I wouldn't want to spend inordinate amounts of time on the working thing, on yes. a solution yeah. and then find that no, 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 no. you have no interest in that whatsoever. Thanks so, for wasting your time. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so I well, guess I guess that's the kind of just high level, you know, which direction. It doesn't have to be the exact path, but which direction do you want yeah. staff to go? Well, the discussion two strategy meetings ago around this topic, when Steve presented, was e really there's two choices that council faces. That is to prohibit short-term rentals or it's allowed under uh, something like uh, option five. Because mm -hmm. that will give us the most control and, and very cogent arguments. You know, the fact that uh, 50 or 60 people at the information meeting mm -hmm. said one thing or another is it's not irrelevant because they are engaged uh, residents and and uh, you know maybe they're representative of the populace. But really, it's up, we are going to have to make the hard decision. And so, I think it. I think the discussion two meetings ago was we have to make a call. Either prohibit it. <coughs> that's going to be maybe against the community's wishes. It's going to be very hard to enforce, etc., etc. Or prohibit it, except under specific controls and it, and specifically the, we looked at a very a lot of them and TUPs was the the, the thing that came up mm. which means it doesn't go with the land it goes with the owner and, you know all these all the if you remember the discussion it was quite some time ago now I, I guess from my perspective in terms of the whole enforcement issue because that is it is important uh, we don't want to implement something and then be faced with uh, 
uh, I can't enforce scenario. Um, I think that outright prohibition, which is basically the way it stands now, that's the status quo, um, does present a lot of issues about enforcement. It's going to be difficult, uh, to say the least. Um, if you have uh, a regime whereby people can legitimize the activity, but it's very tightly controlled, if you invite them into the process, let's say, these are the conditions under which you're going to be allowed to do it. Most people will come forward and accept <clears throat> those conditions. And then, if they can't live up to them, that's a different story. But at least you've got all the information. You've got a, a, a regime under which they have to act. And if they don't, it's going to be much, much easier to enforce under that scenario than it is under the first scenario, in my <coughs> opinion. I'm not saying one's better than the other, although, in my opinion, I think it's also important to weigh the um, loss of potential long-term rental properties for people who need those kind of properties, who can't afford to buy, but who still live here for one reason or another. So th that's another consideration. And that council cares about living here. People like volunteer firefighters or new residents who are testing the waters or whatever. So, so there, there are, you know, it's, it's yeah, yeah, you guys have to make the hard call, but yeah. in this terms is, this of is enforcement, I think that the latter is going to be easier to enforce. Communities all over the world, but particularly Canada, are facing this now, and and quite a few communities are coming down on the the ones with more bylaw offices than ours, um, are saying no SDRs. Others, like Whistler, for example, the whole economy relies on short-term rentals. Well, no, that's not that's not quite right because the Whistler has a very very pressing housing crisis because. There are way too many Airbnbs and short-term rentals that are not um, operating under the regime that they've set up, which is, you know, you get zoned for tourist accommodations or you don't, you don't rent. You can do long-term rentals, but people are doing the short-term stuff and they're not allowed to. And as a result, there's nowhere for the workers who have to run the whole resort to live. Yeah. So it's a huge issue. Um, places like Seashell, it's, they've said, wide open, go for it. Rent, rent whatever you want. Um, well, I mean, that's often the, you know, that's your business model why you buy a house sometimes that you expect to be able to do this. I don't know if you saw the report in the paper that said that Airbnb was about a 40% more revenue mm -hmm. than long term rental. And so if you're going to invest in rental property, of course you would Airbnb it. In other parts of the world, uh, the uplift is 200 and 300%. You get three times more Airbnb than you do renting long term. So, given that the status quo is that it's not permitted, it's not a permitted use at the current time, anybody who has made that kind of an investment decision in Lions Bay has done so at their own risk, in my opinion. To the extent that they first check all our bylaws before yeah, they buy a house. Sure. I haven't had, nobody's come to me for a discussion about yeah. this. Peter, for me, the uh, when the decision comes, uh, and I was certainly the biggest proponent of staff not putting their time to um, five, because it was unquantified what that would be. I mean, I really, there's a lot of stuff that staff are doing that are a benefit to all, if not most, of our residents versus a very small entrepreneurial bunch that are renting rooms. <coughs> uh, do you have an idea for what kind of time commitment this would be for staff? Once, it, once to you say. To adapt it or to enforce it? Well, I presume once, I mean, they come to you, you say yay, nay, and here are the conditions, and I guess you draw I, blood and off they go. Here's your permit. I, I would I would get uh, Steve to draft all the conditions that would then come to council for vetting. Uh, we'd have an approved policy. Um, we'd have, you know, here, here's the rules. Um, people would then, you know, we'd post them all, and then people would be invited to come in and, and apply. Mm -hmm. Uh, those applications would come to council. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so then Steve, unless, unless you want to delegate that, Steve's doing yeah. the heavy lifting then until it to begin, comes yeah. back. In yeah. promulgating the thing, and and the enforcement, I believe I heard him say, is really complaint based. So you're not going out there not looking for people Airbnb. Right. So, so let, let's go to that and let's use the poster child child complaint site, who chooses not to come and see you. Because why would they? And uh, they're operating way on the outside of the boundaries here. So where do you see the enforcement going using that one as an example? I, I would say that if somebody is not complying with the conditions under which they've been licensed to do the activity, 
then we inform them in no uncertain terms that their license is going to get pulled unless they correct the situation promptly. What if so they don't have, they a, license don't have a license? If they don't have a license, then we'll know about it because they're not paying for the license to begin with. And we would have a bylaw that is very, very clear about the subject. And we would have that much greater, I, I think, of a much stronger position if we had to go and enforce it in court. Not that we ever want to take our residents to court, but maybe we do issue them a ticket and say, get a permit, like now. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the bylaw notice enforcement penalty could be only be a maximum of $500, but it could be per day. Um, so that would certainly cut into someone's revenue. Um, so that, you know, that's the least um, laborious method of enforcement. The other, the other two allow, but different approaches are not really workable, are they? Uh, the distinction well, between primary residence and secondary suite, I mean, how... That's, yeah, I mean, that would be, what you're doing is you're protecting suites from being rented out on a short-term basis, thereby making them available for long-term rental for those who need them. Yeah, I'm, I'm very loath to tell Lions Bears what they're allowed to do with the property. Um, <coughs> a little bit of control might be good, meaning a permit. So, so you're so already telling them that they cannot do short-term rentals yeah. with the bylaw that's existed since 2004. Mm, well, there, there was it's a secondary sphere, but I, I guarantee you, nobody knows that. And they're not being, uh, I know ignorance is 90% of the law, but people are not checking the bylaw on a regular basis, as you very well know. And, and we have no, you know, we're, we don't have an enforcement program for this activity at this point in time. The only, the, the, the complaints will arise from parking. For the and, rest, and I don't think people can. Noise sometimes. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good neighbor stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so would, would I be correct in saying that, that our guidance to staff on this one is to go with the allow under a temporary <coughs> permit? No guarantee that uh, there would there be uh, this published criteria for, oh, for sure. how you would, whether you would get one or not, mm -hmm. to do with what, setbacks, parking availability, what sort of things would... I think there was about at least <coughs> 10 different examples of conditions that were in Steve's yeah, report. There was. I, I can't remember them all offhand, <coughs> yeah. but uh, we'd certainly revisit that and, and come up with a list that would be vetted by council. And so somebody comes to, uh, let's say we delegate it to staff and applies for a permit and you turn it down. What's their recourse? No. Well, I guess we'd have to determine whether or not this was the type of application that you were going to delegate authority to the CAO. Well, whoever does to, it. To to somebody decide. has to, yeah. So, yeah. So, so there'd be black and white criteria, check, yeah. check, 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 cross, cross. Well, it'd have denied. to be a site specific, you know, it's going to be site specific. It's going to be, you know, you might want to have a, um, a process whereby they've got to canvas their neighbors. You might want to have a process, I mean, in, in any event, you're going to have to go out and check, check their parking capacity and things like that. Um, so there, there'd be a checklist. We'd have a checklist. We could staff would have to go out and check it out, and then prepare a report. And okay. Make so a recommendation or make the decision, whichever way it goes. As representatives of the community members, is what is this what the community wants? I have come around to number five. Okay. So. So go in that direction. Go in that direction. See what it looks like. Yep. It doesn't mean you've made a decision. Just that's no. going to invest the time. No, so we're not <coughs> even going to take a resolution on that because the resolution will take place when we look at the first mm -hmm. uh, reading on, on the Bible. Just the yeah. Yeah. Is, is that the kosher? Direction, the direction is fine. It's is that, understood. Is that, that's kosher that's to do it there? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, then about the secondary suite uh, parking. For your Friday email. Uh, no, that would be premature. That you've asked them to research it? Th that option? Yeah, I suppose. We can get some feedback on that one. Maybe. Well, anything. Right, but, yeah. I mean, it certainly is the hot topic. Yeah. So, missing, missing the conversation. So, Ron, Ron is suggesting that I put that in the Friday email saying mm -hmm. that council has 
I don't know if it's tentatively that is the word, but but uh, provisionally directed yeah. staff to investigate yeah. this option for short short term rentals. Mm -hmm. okay. And please let us know if you've got it wrong. Type of thing. Yeah. STRs under temporary use permits. Okay, that's good. And I can say you know we want to allow this, but it needs to be controlled to not overburden your neighbours. Okay, and then parking. I think there was really, uh, you know, there were two options that were liked and the rest were not liked. <coughs> and it was fairly obvious what they were. Um, and so just to cut to the chase, I mean, the status quo is, we all know what that is. Um, you're required to have uh, a third parking on your property. If you can't, then you're required to put a, a thing on title. Um, or is it covenant on title? But the, the, the wrinkle that was brought up was to allow a variance on the setback requirement. So you could, you could build a parking pad within, on your property, but in the setback. Because right now, in theory, although a lot of people do park in their, in their uh, setback, but this is actually a structure, like a, like a parking it, it, area. It could be a, just, just a pad, or it could be a carport, yeah. it could be a garage. Um, Anything that's for the purpose of parking, basically. You know, I don't think I would like to see a whole bunch of sheds within 20 feet of the road, which is the whole point of a setback, is to, is to not have construction too close to the road. So could we could we be restricted to something like a pad? Okay, but bear in mind that um, in many locations throughout Lions Bay, the property line isn't right at the road. It's already, you know, it's way in there. It's in there in ways already, and they're already in a <coughs> just to get to the road across our boulevard. But uh, it's just something that just occurred to me. I just thought I'd mention it. But um, certainly, yes, you <coughs> could just say uh, a parking pad can be zero setback, uh, a carport. Um, it's probably going to depend on site specific, but, mm. but you could say that. Uh, you could implement a policy that says council uh, will look favorably, depending upon the circumstances, to um, allowing variances for carports and garages where need be in order to provide sufficient parking on their property. Is this a board of variance? Variance, or well, you is can this set a that as a policy, and then uh, anybody who wants to apply for a variance of a zoning regulation can apply either to the board of variance, or they can apply to council for a. a the development variance permit. Okay, well, we'll get to that wrinkle uh, later. I think it's fair to say that that it was fairly clear that people didn't want people parking on the street, meaning to eliminate the requirement for additional parking for secondary suites. They actually wanted people parking on their property, not on the street. So that I think that was fairly clear. The second option was um, the transit option, but because that's somewhat academic in Lions Bay, there's really not near to transit anyway, and besides which, that's not going to help you. Um, Sorry, just... To go back to number one, I, th I thought number one was you don't need to have an extra space. It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't that the ex it didn't have anything to do with whether that space was on your property or no, off that's your right. property. But nobody liked that option. No, no, it was like they yeah, they no, want they, it was in fact they, they want to keep the park off street. Secondary or suite. They want them to have an extra parking space, but yeah. that question doesn't ask whether it has to be on their property or not. I think well, certainly I assume that meant um, not on the street. Well, the more the one that's on street is number five. Nobody and, liked and that nobody, one either. Nobody cared for that. Nobody anymore. liked that either. And and that's sure a can what. of worms. And what happens when somebody else parks in your now allowed? You know, we have this already now. People get these encroachment allowances, and then they put up little signs: <coughs> private parking. It's not private parking, but they think it is. Right, but you do have, you do have parking all over the place in Lions Bay, on our boulevard, and. The only hitch is that they can't be there for more than 72 hours, but they do it all over the place. Yeah, you're allowed to park on the street if you want. Um, so except in I don't really see that much difference between allowing somebody to park for 72 hours on the boulevard and saying, pay us X dollars and you can park there. You don't have to move it every 72 hours. You can That's your parking spot. But well, that would just be a special kind of decal, or what? I don't know. I haven't drilled down that far, but it's just the concept. I mean, I would, there's very few people who wouldn't want to move every 72 hours. Yeah, and generally speaking, <coughs> people are going to use their cars. Mm -hmm. So whether they, you know... Besides whether, which, whether who's you, going to enforce it? Whether you no, insist 
that, okay, so, so if you allow someone to park on the boulevard for up to 72 hours and they're a tenant in a property and they're constantly going to work and returning and they're parking on that spot on the street, nobody's doing anything about it. <coughs> they're just doing it anyways but because they're moving, they're moving their car, but it's there. Like, I don't really understand the distinction between saying, no, you have to provide that tenant with a parking spot yeah. on your property versus off your property when he's already parking there all the time. Well, that's because there's no on cares. property. There's, well, I think look, some people care. Mm. Uh, there's, uh, we, we hear, especially Isle View, for example, there's too many people parking on the street. And the whole intent of this bylaw was to try and get people off the street uh, by enforcing it, except if you can't. It's like shooting yourself in the foot. I mean, the reality is that on Isle View, there's the, the, the driveway access is minimal and the parking on, on property parking is minimal and so people have no choice but to park on the street. Now, in our area, in my area, we monitor what's going on in the cul-de-sac because we're concerned about cars coming down the driveway, especially in the wintertime, and hitting something parked in the street. So we try and control it as much as possible. But is it an option to say that you cannot park there? I really doubt it. It's going to be really difficult to enforce, and the residents are the ones that have to accept it. Yeah, we've got new people just moved into a house, no secondary suite, five cars. <coughs> yeah. So there's two space for two on the driveway, and guess where the other three are going? On a bend. Uh, somebody's going to have to speak to them, um, not me. Uh, so the point is, it, it's. But do they move it every seventy-two hours? Those three cars. Yeah, well, that, that would be one of nice no stopping, no parking uh, right. outside bend uh, sign areas. But that's that's a different thing. But the point is there. That's not even a secondary suite issue. We're talking specifically parking required for secondary mm -hmm. suites. The status quo is, we all know what that is. Maybe that's good enough. I want to remind people about I you is that one of the things that's very clear, all the residents of Iowa, nobody on Iowa wants to see no parking signs down the street because <clears throat> it's going to cause all sorts of problems. Yeah, I don't see why there would be any. No, there, there shouldn't be. There'd be no need for them that's that I right. can see. It's residents only. So well, given, <coughs> given the restrictions on parking on one's own parcel on Iowa, mm -hmm. does anybody have a, a secondary suite on Iowa? Oh, yeah. Yeah, about half, I would say. Okay. Right and so where do those tenants park? Well, some of them park inside on the property, and some park on the top of the driveway, and others park on the street. So is staff expected to go and ticket all those people if they don't move every 72 hours? Well, and that's the other point. How, how are you going to enforce this nine months of the Well, that's a big deal with you, Peter. You can't enforce it, don't have it. Well, okay, so now are we talking about the 72-hour clause in the parking lot? Well, I'm with you. I, got, I grabbed the 72-hour, the rental guy that goes to work every day, and okay, one day he gets hung over at Super Bowl. He might stretch it to 72. That's only 48. But he's going the next day, so, you know, the status quo is looking better by the minute here. But if they have a registered secondary suite, they're required to have pro parking on the property so they won't be on the street. But, but usually uh, that parking is so difficult to use that people say, hey, here's my third spot. It may be tandem, it may be parallel, but people are parking on the street with dogs. It's too difficult to use. Covenant or no covenant? Yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I'm just looking for, <coughs> looking for answers, but not expecting to find any. <laughs> well, our situation is very difficult. Don't want us to turn into Vancouver, where you've got you go around mm -hmm. trying to find a parking spot in a residential street, you can't do it because there aren't any, and there's very little off-street parking. Mm -hmm. Period, and so it, it's a problem, yeah. and it will be a problem if we don't, if we're not careful with it. Yeah, this is specific to secondary suite parking, and I think <coughs> the nods around the table are status quo is fine. Okay, let's go yeah. beyond that. Yeah, definitely status yeah. quo. Yeah, okay. status quo. Uh, I would say that's your direction. Direction right? understood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So we need to receive this report. Can I have a Thank motion? You. Thanks. And a second. Any further discussion? If if the preceding wasn't enough. <laughs> okay, so all in favor of receipt and oppose that carries. <coughs> Next report, uh, emergency notification system. Let's see if we can speed this up. Peter, tell us some, anything w that is not in the report that uh, we need to know. You're going to pick the right option? Uh, yeah. Uh, on pain of what? <laughs> 
He knows. You're going to make Nive make, uh, make the choice. <laughs> so you're asking for a $2,000 allowance. Is this in the budget it is already? In the budget. Yeah. We just wanted to bring it to, sorry, to the resolution um, just so that we can purchase it prior to the adoption of the budget. Is that what it is? Okay, fine. So we've discussed this uh, several times. It's, it's either a, a voice, a mass call, text, something, something. I'm sure you'll get the right thing. It's two grand a year. It's, a, it's an emergency service thing, really. Uh, we've had need of it at least twice. would have been really, really useful. And it is an opt-in. And so it's going to take a bit of a marketing plan around mm -hmm. it as well, uh, which is not budgeted, I see. But presumably, we can do something good. Well, I think that uh, you know, even you know, getting all those who currently mm -hmm. subscribe actively to our village update, um, you can get a, uh, I would expect a big uptake there. And this, um, you know, the the second service already has a substantial foothold in terms of people who are already using the service who are residents of Lions Bay. Who's that? What's that? What service is that? Sorry, I missed that point. 20% 20, 20 of, of uh, Lions Bayers are already connected to the system through the uh, West Van School Board or Audits. the Squamish uh, District. But they've only opted in to receive school board messages, not municipal yeah. messages. So, so if they live here, then they would be invited to opt in to receive more yeah, I, I'm Lions Bay. Yeah. So I get school board yeah. messages. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> more so for snow, although it never works. By yeah. phone or by text or by email, whatever they, they choose. Fine. And uh, the, the, the other thing about the, the, the second option is that there is, well, there's a couple of things that really are, are important to me, and one is that there is a privacy impact statement, which means, you know, it's like a 20-page document that's already vetted by the information mm -hmm. or privacy mm -hmm. commissioner. Um, and so that's awesome. And uh, the other aspect is that uh, there's potential for using the, uh, uh, the pre-authorization forms and waivers to uh, provide authorization for ESS staff. We brought this up at the ESS meeting um, the other night. And um, so we'll explore that with the ministry because they've got new requirements in terms of reception centers for ESS. Um, you know, taking, you know, what do they do with minors, unaccompanied minors who are their legal guardians? So there's all kinds of new rules around that, quite convoluted. So we've got a pre-auth that says we can hand it off to Mrs. Smith next door, then you know it makes everybody's life a lot easier here. So um, I think that's, that's another aspect of this. That, that, uh, What's the, what do you reckon the uh, administrative burden is on the maintaining this thing? Staff burden, maintaining the messages, keeping you know, cleaning up the data, I think scrubbing. It's, you know, like uh, if, if we've got uh, you know some issues with water, we want the residents to conserve water, and I can shoot out a blast via the system. Everybody gets it. Uh, it'll, it will hit a lot more people, and, and messaging for those kinds of matters will be much, much easier. This is a compliment to email. So it remind me, is it text or voice or both? Both. Yeah. So if you sign up a, a cell phone, you will get a text message. Correct. And if you sign up your home landline, you get a recording. Text message. to speech, yeah. Text to speech, okay. And it just rings another. Yeah. Any other questions? You move? Sorry, I'm moving. Okay, uh, we have a motion, second. Any further discussion? Okay, so all in favor? Opposed? That carries. Good. Well done. That's okay. great. That's progress. Approval of election advertising and campaigning policy number 1701. Are you running the meeting now? Well, you just want me to go faster. 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 <laughs> I thought you wanted me to go faster. <laughs> let's, anything that can speed this up, let's go. 43. Okay. So we're concentrating here on uh, candidate advertising on the municipal website, uh, all candidates' meetings, and obligations under the LECFA. Okay, good. You've all seen the report. I like uh, these are all great suggestions. It gives, uh, uh, gives credence, uh, makes provision for uh, sort of an officially sanctioned all candidates' mm -hmm. meeting. Uh, there's going to be rules. No, I guess these are the rules. What if not all candidates can attend? Does that automatically stop it being an all candidates meeting? What if they What if they decline to come? Well, we can't make them come. So. But what if uh, we uh, accidentally uh, <coughs> schedule a date that the sort of a critical mass of people can't come? Mm -hmm. So uh, did I mean that happened in the last by election, right? Mm -hmm. It was an all candidates meeting I, where I, half I, the in a roundabout way I stumbled on the same thing on page forty five. Uh, 
the second line of uh, point four, and you know, I, I understand that you know where you do the twenty sixth, the tenth, and all that stuff, but I mean. Calls can be booked way in advance, as they frequently are. Uh, weird junk happens and stuff like that. I feel it, it's uh, as much the CAO that's going to get strung out here in this one uh, as people bang the table as to why things didn't happen. And frequently there's very good reasons, as was the case in the last time. Too short, couldn't get organized, hall booked, and all the rest of this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Is there a way that you can find a, uh, and I was thinking like, I mean, it doesn't have to be CAO at, at the CAO's or at the council's discretion that this is the deal? So maybe we can add some discretionary language in here, That's except that, um, you know, these are the dates <coughs> during which it will have to be held. So yep. as soon as, if, you, if as, soon as you know, if it's going to be, as soon as you know there's going to be an election, then you book the hall. So who's going to resign next so that you can... Uh, Test, test this. Yeah. Let's test it. Because that's the problem. Well, we have a test coming up. Yeah, yeah. I, don't think I mean, I guess has to my, question is, my question is my question is, well, do we want to I'd have like a some... sanctioned or candidates meeting? Or, or we always debate. have. Or discretion. Mm. I mean, just because. No, I think people need to know can they rely on the village to organize the all candidates? <coughs> We've so, always so, had. Yeah, there is the, the, you can't go the other way on this. You know, okay. you can say. No, it, no you I wasn't going to go not, no. Staff is, you know, administration is not going to have anything to do with this. And the groups in the community can organize, but the the danger in that is that you're not necessarily going to get a, a straight up, fair and reasonable process that's fair to all, um, and that's that would be my concern. Like our I last all candidates see, meeting, where half the candidates <coughs> were not coming. I would rather see a, a, a policy that stipulates this is what we will do, and you know maybe we need to add a line that um, um, you know. Best efforts or discretion or something like that. Uh, that uh, you know, um, staff may cancel the all candidates meeting if there is insufficient interest or insufficient Done. insufficient that, that Well, it, it, from the candidates. <coughs> yeah. 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 So I mean, if no audience comes, that's their lookout. Oh yeah. I yeah, think yeah, I'd want something yeah. even more. I mean, you you're looking for an approval adoption now, but there's no hurry, right? We can we can bring this back. Yeah, we can bring it back next meeting. Yeah. I would say come up with some language, not just uh, uh, insufficient interest. Say that if there's less than a certain number of candidates, mm -hmm. um, less than three, because I've said more than like two. More, I'm thinking more, more like if two or more candidates cannot attend, then that's not a suitable date. That actually makes it higher than three, probably. So yeah, I mean, if you have fifteen like candidates, if you have fifteen candidates in a in a general election, or well, then a percentage. You know, if you've three got quarters. only two of them or three of them can't make it, you're going to cancel the all candidates. Yeah. Okay. So let's say three quarters. Okay. You need to come up with something that fits the bill here, Peter. Yeah. Okay. Make it through. I'll work on some wording. Um, okay. So we're going to refer this one back. Um, can I have a motion? Yeah. I think Thanks. you can do it right in that number four section. Yeah. I know yeah. That's the place. Yeah. This, the rest of it's good, and I, uh, it's overdue because it's always been a, a cause for discussion every time this come up before. People say. I've never seen anybody organize all candidates meeting before, but we always have. So that's that's good. So uh, we have a motion to refer, a second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? That carries. Okay, okay. <coughs> Page two. Encroachment applications. Now we've read both of them. Anything you want us to know? Uh, not really. Essentially, uh, the first one is pretty straightforward. Um, there is no permanent impact. These are just papers that are put down and can be removed. Uh, the second one is a permanent, um, but the retaining wall is required to help shore up the property, and it doesn't impact any future use. Um, okay, so that was going to be my question. You are absolutely certain there is no impact to future drainage requirements? Uh, correct. If we were to put any drainage on that side, within that encroached area, we would have to build a retaining wall ourselves. Anyway. Anyways. And, and so this retaining wall would accommodate a potential future drain? Uh, the, the future drainage we've looked at uh, would be on the, the street side, side of the, the hydro pole, so it's not impacted. Um, I do, uh, thanks to the CAO, I do want to uh, highlight on page 56, the actual encroachment area is the area between the edge of pavement and the property line. Um, I've drawn the box into the entire lot. 
Yeah, it's hard to tell what this is by scale. So it was this carport is sort of like a car's width. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> That's a standard driveway going to the edge of the pavement. Yeah. So it's about just over a driveway's width. I mean, right. there's a there's a there's a rendering of what it looks like. Is that one of yours? This yeah. Happened. This is the, the actual encroachment. Yeah. Yeah. This is particularly wide uh, from the fog line to the. Are those rock gardens on the property line? It's uh, just a rock wall. <coughs> Uh, which rock? The the rocks on the uh, boulevard? Yeah. No, they're just loose loose rocks. I don't know if Those are encroaching too. Those are on the boulevard. I don't know if they're intended to stay. I don't know what the intent is uh, from the homeowner, but I can definitely take council's recommendation back to him. Is yeah. there any potential need for recambering on this road? Uh, Every road needs to be looked at individually when it comes to drainage. So if this road was to be up for replacement, we would probably take a look at it during rainfall, uh, map the drainage and see where it's going and uh, adjust the camber based upon that. Okay, but your recommendation in both cases is to allow the encroachment? Correct. I don't see any, any negative impact to uh, the public. Okay, so uh, we haven't got a second in motion, so I'll take one uh, for the first encroachment application, which is the one for um, 335 Ocean View. We'll take the uh, take the motion as uh, as the recommendation in a second. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? That carries. And the second application, that being the one for um, uh, three four five Bayview. Same questions. Uh, drainage is not impacted. Um, this one is a little more uh, necessary for structural reasons. Yeah. Not that that's our problem, but no. <coughs> my question is always, as we go towards, um, I don't know if we're ever going to have a need for road widening, but certainly drainage improvements. If it is then required that people cut back into their property to provide parking, for example, where they're currently, here for example, on Bayview, halfway up to the school, everybody's parked on the boulevard, that seems to be where you go, um, wheels just touching the roadway. If we decide that we want to put a sidewalk there, for example, leading up to the school and or a drain, and they are now required to cut into their thing, who pays for that retaining wall? They would. If, if the regulations, if the requirement of this council is that we provide a sidewalk, um, they would have to amend their property if they wanted to park there or park on could, their property. Right, absolutely. Yeah. As is required. Yeah. And if they have more cars than two plus one, I don't that, believe that would be a village concern. Yeah, that's... Well, the problem with Bayview is we do have a sidewalk there, albeit asphalt with a painted line, yeah. mm -hmm. and people are routinely parking on sidewalks. So that's why I'm thinking we're going to need a raised curb at some point, yeah. which means people can't park there. Well, I just think of all the kids that have to walk out, well, have to go into the street. I'm just, I'm just waiting, and I hope it doesn't happen on our watch, for a kid to get hurt walking to school and or walking to the beach. Because I don't know if you, uh, yeah, you probably do see the kids walking past in the summer. Hundreds of kids walk to the beach, and there's no sidewalk. Very scary. But that's not the topic under discussion here. So, um, okay, we'll take a motion uh, worded as the recommendation. Shona, you good with that? And uh, Fred gave the motion. Thanks, Fred. And a second. <laughs> Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Moving on to the uh, receipt of the Lions Bay Air Quality Monitoring Study Report, page 71. I'll just comment on this very briefly. Um, this was the result of the mobile air monitoring unit sitting in our school parking lot for about seven weeks. The interesting thing about the study was it found no particular particularly poor air quality, which, as I said at the, uh, the last committee meeting at Metro, I found very strange, uh, given that uh, there was a pall of smoke over the unit itself, sometimes from a smoking fireplace right next door, and there were lots of inversion conditions. This was in the middle of winter. Driving back from Whistler, often I would see this yellow dome over Lions Bay in, uh, you know, in the setting sun. But apparently, uh, our uh, Metro's air quality standards are not that high, because we never w exceeded uh, air quality standards on, on an average basis. They did see anticipated spikes uh, when people lit up their fires, and they did see anticipated spikes in SO2, sulfur dioxide, related to highway traffic. 
So it was working, although I have my doubts about how often and well it was working. But essentially, uh, you know, I had hoped to use this as a tool to begin to run some sort of learn-to-burn uh, air uh, wood stove change-out program. This doesn't back it up. Yeah, I mean, they, they mention it, but th there's no there's no pressing need, like there is in other places in Metro. There's places in the village you park the truck and you'll soon get a result real quick. I, I, there's also that. I mean, you know, the reason, on a personal note, the reason I moved from our last house to the one we're at now is my kids woke up coughing every winter morning mm -hmm. because we were in this smoke shed, as, as I yep. found out having spoken to them. The hot smoke rises, cools, falls, and it goes down water courses. And the air quality was terrible. We but it's problem. very localized. Um, yeah. The yeah. lower end of yeah. view, same idea. doesn't hit me, but it hits the neighbors down below, all of them. So you will find some people uh, aver that our air quality is fantastic, and others, and I've, I've moved houses three times in Lions Bay, the middle house was terrible, terrible, noticeably. Well, I don't think uh, this negates the, the uh, benefit of a learn not. Doesn't learn negate learn. it, no. doesn't backstop it though. Yeah. Because On the other hand, it says air quality is not that bad. Yeah, overall, but if you happen to be in the pocket, Maybe your neighbor would appreciate learning how to burn his stuff better. Yeah, so right now I think it's going to be a neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor thing. And I've called up my neighbors on occasion saying, you know, I don't know what you're doing, but can you just check your fire because... Mm -hmm. and, and they do immediately, but that doesn't always happen. So uh, that was sort of the upshot of it. Pretty voluminous report, lots of technical stuff. Um, it's good, good for the files. Nice, there's something for you to study, memorize, and uh, act on. <coughs> And amongst all the other stuff you do, so I'll take a motion for a seat and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, opposed, that carries. So uh, we're going to the session, the Metro Electoral Area A OCP. So the recommendation at the Council Strategy Committee meeting was that the information report summary contents re Metro Area A draft OCP be received and referred to Council for direction to staff to formalize referral comp comments back to Metro after further consideration at the upcoming strategic plan review date TBA. Thank you. Shall we take that as a motion? Um, thanks. Uh, Jim is prepared to uh, take that as read on a motion. Can I have a second? Uh, any further discussion? Well, just one thing I, I highlighted in my copy of it that uh, your comments I thought uh, in your piece leading into it were valid and they need to be um, sent on to Metro as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would be very concerned if they didn't get our comments. Mm -hmm. What they'll do with them is up to them, of course, but I, I will be lobbying. I'm on that committee. I'm actually the vice chair, I just found out, uh, of that committee um, to make sure that line space interests are represented there. Okay, so we have a seconded motion to do exactly as the motion says. All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Council reports? I don't believe so. Uh, committees, trees, views, and landscapes. Ron? Thank you. Uh, this is for the one on page 97 <coughs> 188. Um, I didn't attend this particular one, but I see my colleagues were unanimous and nothing on the minutes. Uh, so that being said, and it's a cut and clean, I'm prepared to go to uh, resolution, which is, as recommended by the tree committee, be it resolved by council, that for tree application number 77, the subject trees and associated tree be removed. Fine, so we don't see the application. Uh, that came to us before. I didn't see it. Uh, I haven't seen it. I thought we were going through some. <coughs> uh, it should be on table just to have a peek. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what we're saying, good or bad on. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. that's, uh, sorry. I, I missed that. Um, that should be the full report in here. Okay, so we're going to have to um, uh, <coughs> defer both of these. So, um, Ron, can I have a motion to defer? Defer both. Thanks. And a second? Uh, all in favor, oppose that carries. So we'll move on to uh, the emergency services reports on page 101. I, I, I would like, just for a minute, on, while we're on tree committee stuff, um, I had a call from a resident about um, a tree application, okay, up on the top of the village, Mr. Neville Abbott. 
Okay. Uh, this is part of, uh, uh, before you go too far, Okay. go to page 99 of 188, okay. item 7. Okay. Uh, this is one of the things I would have addressed that you No, that's fine. So yeah. it's still there. Okay. Okay, fine. By the way, I'm just uh, also on the tree thing. Three committee members, is that quorum? It's a quorum. Yeah, okay. What is, how, how many are you on the committee? Five? Mm -hmm. Five. So three is just quorum? Well, it would have at least used to have to be uh, a counselor, yeah. oh, but that's the longer actually, case. Actually, we can go back. Give from, uh, uh, yeah, I don't like doing things on table. Uh, is, is it, I mean, the recommendation is to approve, right? Recommendation to approve, if you will just give me one second. Picture should tell everything we need. Just give us the show and tell. Because the public works come out. Okay, I believe what it is that he's <coughs> specific. Pardon me, only weakness. Here's a picture removal. That tree? Uh, Doesn't mean anything to you. It's a picture second, of the tree. Picture, picture. Is that my prize tree in my front yard? Because I have no way of knowing. So application is by the resident at 45 Periwinkle? Yeah, that's the end of Periwinkle. Kind of, is there a this is done. No, actually, we're going to pull them both. Yep, no, okay, yep, yep, yep. so uh, they'll come back. Uh, timing wise, that's okay. For the, yeah, that's fine. There's no, there's I no, there's a lot of snow out there right now. Yeah, all five need to get this done. Okay, so this can wait two weeks. Okay. I'll take that as a yes. Okay, yeah, good. So we'll move on. Uh, 101 Emergency Services Report. Uh, anybody have anything they are particularly. Worried about? Yeah, on uh, page 101 of 188, uh, just a query. I think they've got a November 30th LB, LBFB report. I think they mean December 31st. Um, mm -hmm. And they've got incidents in the village. They've got Strachan Point wires down, Lawrence wires down. Mm -hmm. That's West Island. Yeah. And Strachan Point's electoral area A. Um, mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, I've asked them to tighten up on the report. I've asked them to give us a, a, an actual tabular layout of, of our members, what their qualifications are, what their next step is and when, uh, graphs, everything. So this report is starting to get a little questionable. Peter, can you get them? I, I've asked. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to tighten up on this a bit. Yeah, well. And why were we going to um, scrap him? We specifically said we don't go to Strachan. Unless, uh, unless it was a... Uh, uh, Sometimes the dispatch system gets it wrong, as mm -hmm. you know very well. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. somebody punches some key and it says yeah. something that's not. But, yeah, it's a good flag for it because mm -hmm. we, we don't go to Strachan. We certainly don't go to Ocean until they uh, agree to share costs. Lawrence, Lawrence. Way is West Ham. Yeah. 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 <coughs> now, unless that was a mutual assist, but then it should say so. That's actually in West End? Mm -hmm. Lawrence Way, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right near the northern border. Mm -hmm. Okay, the structure fire we know about, that was what we actually pay our taxes for, uh, and, and it worked exceptionally well. So instead of the house being fully involved and burning to the ground, uh, it sustained minor damage. So that's, gr that's a good news story. What was that? That one? The uh, floor issue? Or is that the yeah. one in the next one meeting? <coughs> no, I think that was the date. Oh, okay. I think it was, right, Peter? Uh, I don't remember. Well, we don't have much too many structural fires. Well, we have the next month as well, up on Mountain. Yeah, I believe it was ah, on Mountain. You, you're right. So this one I don't even know about. Yeah, I'm not Sorry, sure about I, I, I just I didn't oh, yeah. check the dates. You know, these ones where, you know, this is the reason that taxpayers support the fire department to the tune of 400,000 round, round um, right? When all said and done. Yes. Uh, you know, I'd like to be able to justify that. There was a reason why I put it in the mayor's message mm -hmm. to say that, you know, that's why we pay <coughs> half a million dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. I know the numbers going up as I speak. $400,000 for a fire department to put our house wise. I think it'd be nice to get a report on the good news. I mean, it'd be uh, good for everybody. 
So we presented the BCCH, whatever that is, via Save on Foods, a check for $5,000. Is that a... Uh, BC Children's Hospital. They make a $5,000 contribution. Is that something that council decides, or who decides it? From their fundraising money, from Firefighters Day. They, they do it every year. And they so we, uh, that, we give them discretion to uh, repurpose some of their fundraising money. Well, they have control over their fundraising money, <coughs> as we had determined. It goes into a separate bank account. And yeah, but what, I mean, and they make a well, I, I know, we, we can have 15 bank accounts if we want, they're all our bank accounts. Right, they're under nature, but we had discussed this last year. It's in the budget, in other words. Yes, it's budgeted, so Fine. it's approved essentially through the budget. Okay. Fine, do, it's budgeted. Um, though. But it's built at BC Children's Hospital, Yeah, and fine. they donate 5000 every year. That would also be a good news story, that uh, residents reading this would like to know what BCCA is. One thing that is happening now in the... Um, private world with a lot of this stuff is that a lot of organizations now are moving away from just reporting of the things they've done and they're adding good catches to it to advertise that this, like the Lions Bay Fire Department for example did did this or this. It wasn't really something we do but it was a good catch and it prevented something from happening and yeah. it looks really good and it justify, helps justify some of the stuff that the Fire, fire Department does. Uh, yeah, these are good news stories. Uh, uh, you know, if they're not going to toot their own horn, uh, I'd like the data so we can toot the horn for them. Um, back to this $5,000 that, the, you know, if they didn't raise the money, we would pay for it. Why did it go via Save on Food? They do it, um, they've always done it with Save on Foods. So do, um, do we have our name on a, on a plaque somewhere? Yes. Okay. I don't sound a plaque, but, it's, well, uh, but it I mean, comes from it, it's it, We're credited. We meaning our, yes. Okay, fine. So I would like to know about that structure fire and post-fire instructor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not the one that we allowed to be burned down because that never happened, right? That never. Yeah. Uh, and that wasn't on baby. Yeah. I'll ask Andrew about it. Yeah. It wasn't good if it was allowed to be burned down. They stopped it. Yeah. Uh, and also ask about this Westland one and the, the uh, yeah. Strachan Point one. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Anything else? So a motion to receive and a second. All in favor? Opposed, that carries. We only get the police report every second month now, so the ink one. Uh, you're asking for three, re we're moving on to um, bylaws. Right, I haven't missed anything. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Um, so the motion is to do first, second, and third reading on the Water Rates and Regulations Bylaw Number no. Two of 1971 Amendment Bylaw Number no. Five One Four. Sure, that's quite a spread from yes. two to five one four of 2017. This has been discussed in uh, multiple meetings. Um, it's part of the budget. Uh, time critical in order to get bills. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> so can I have a motion? Is that a motion, Ron? Yes. Thank you. And a second. Thanks. Any discussion? So uh, I'll call the question on the f on readings one, two, and three on the bylaw as noted. All in favour and opposed? That carries. Okay. Election procedures. Sewer as well. Sewer. Oh, sorry. Did I yeah. go too fast? We okay. The water first, and then the sewer. And the sewer is essentially sewer the rate is the same as the prior year, so it's <coughs> percent increase. I'm just trying to get to the recommendation. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. And uh, same again for the sewer user rates bylaw number 122 of 1984, amendment bylaw number 515 of 2017. Motion and second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? That carries. I had, sorry, one comment. Yeah. Um, the <coughs> solid waste isn't here. Um, we just needed some additional time to review the new fees under um, waste control. There's Solid waste has uh, quite a few more categories than the water and the sewer does, and there just wasn't quite enough time. Um, there's an overall 6% decrease, but not everyone's um, solid waste rate is going down. So we have, staff had a bit more work to do on that. So we will need Why to... Why is that? Just because of it was just more complicated this year with the two rates, and um, like I say, there's several different categories. With sewer, it's just one rate. Oh, see, so the commercial, the marina, yeah, yeah. Well, each the marina, the school, um, the apartments, the townhouses, the store, the um, single family residence. And um, overall, it's going to be a 6% decrease, but it's each category is slightly different. <coughs> So because of that, we'll need a special meeting next week, just a quick one, to have first, second, and third reading, so that we can adopt in time. 
I don't think you see a lot of smiles around the yeah. table on that one. Um, hmm. There's no way to, I mean, I'm sure you're going to get the calculations right. We don't need to see them, or do we, because the rates are mentioned in the bylaw. Yeah, you can't give first, second, and third to a bylaw that isn't before you. Yeah, but uh, uh, pending correct numbers, no, there's no, no draft? No, you're not directing your minds to yeah. what you're being asked to adopt, ultimately. Yeah, we've discussed the, we've discussed the concept many, many times. So so no, you can't do anything to yeah, I'm still working on the rates. No, that, no, was, the that was the delay. I don't even have rates yet, so... The hands off everybody who would hate to have a special meeting next week. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. yeah. well, we could do... Yeah. We do what we, we must do. The only option is first, second, and third reading at the 21st, but then we need a special meeting to adopt. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't be next week, it would be the following week. Mm. Okay, it's a pity that we don't have that. Uh, we can just raise the point, we have too many meetings. So that's why I actually, I guess I got this, why I put it in here, um, highlighting that it wasn't... Yeah. All three weren't here, that we would need a special meeting. Yeah. Okay. It'd be quick. Well, the meetings. No, it means we have to come. Three, you can do it three minutes on your way to drop your kid out. Well, I, first of all, I don't know what day it is, and second of all, I don't well, know what I'm supposed to be doing that day. Yeah. That was the idea, is that we pick the day. We choose a day. We have some flexi a bit of flexibility, and it would be quick. Okay, well, I'll show you my calendar for my uh, real life, and uh, you'll see that it's pretty difficult. All right, you're only one of three. Well, I'm sure you all have the same. I, I know Jim struggles yeah. to make it. Yeah. There's got to be... We, have to, we need three people for quorum. Yeah, that's true. It's a five-minute meeting. It's not go to well, come here. In fact, it's all we need is Shauna and one staff member here. Oh, just Shauna. <laughs> but no, as you mentioned it. <laughs> but I, I go back to the points that were made, like I made before, is that this stuff can be planned, yeah. and we should be bring it on so just a regular take your meeting. Just take shoe up and smack Pam. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's like not uh, my like Khrushchev yeah. did. Yeah, it wasn't fortunate. It's just it wasn't <laughs> comfortable bringing it forward to council as we delved into the calculation. We'd have been fine with it. <laughs> All right, it is what it is. Let's go. Okay, this is well, what it is. We need to pick a date. But we have to pick a date. Yeah, for the special meeting. Okay. Sorry. Be practical. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for some reason, my Starbucks app is messing up my phone. Well, this yours is working. It's missing on your phone. Missing it. Pick it up from here. Okay, so when do you want it? Uh, towards the end of next week. Towards the end of next week. So that's the week starting Monday the 13th. Um, that's family yes. day. That's family day. Family so that's day. not going to happen. So the Thursday, maybe? Or, or does Thursday Doesn't work matter. Everything? Whatever works for you guys. Thursday does not work for me. Uh, all day, in fact, because I'm guests in town. What about you guys? Do you know? Uh, Would Wednesday work? Tuesday won't work for us. Wednesday might. Me. Well, I mean, we're trying to come up with something. Um, Wednesday's in the afternoon is going to be difficult for me. No, it should be. It, and you should do it early morning. Or can you late. do an early morning? Early, mor early morning is best time. Early for morning me. is fine. Like yeah. Do it early. Could yeah. we do it at sort of nine? We have it at seven. Wednesday's difficult at seven. because the posting uh, means it has to be. And Peter's not here on a Wednesday. Oh, don't we just need a recorder? No, we need a corporate officer. Yeah. Oh, we could we could post the notice of meeting. Well, um, that's ahead of time. Yeah, no, we I know. Just I need, need time to, to finish the calculation. That's I mean, what I'm we, saying. I have to meet with people. Just do, uh, that was Peter, all can it we means. Do the, would, can yeah. we do the recorder, or one of us could record? It's the prep. The, the problem is I need time to prepare it. That's why I couldn't have it ready for mm. this meeting. Well, how about um, Friday morning? Then? Does Friday morning work? I don't need to be here, right? No. Well, you, well, you need a corporate officer. Is Pam? Are you a corporate officer? Remember, if you're um, a year yeah. acting Sean, you too? CAO? No. Yes. No, but uh, you have to be designated. Well, you're going to have to present it. I think we did a resolution on that. She can fill in if I'm not yeah. here. Oh, okay. and, and I did for nine months. So, yeah, no, I have the authority. Oh, sure. To was you're saying qualified. Time. Do we need to make that resolution? that far. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Appoint her as well. Just, not just for safety. I don't remember what we've got on the books already. Okay, I've written it down. Okay, I've got... Wednesday would be better for me. But we just need three of us. We need we three talked about having the extra time. To, oh, so Wednesday won't work? <coughs> what time on Wednesday? I've Friday. got a translink. I've got a Mayor's Council meeting on Thursday morning from 9 to 1. What about Friday morning? 
Friday I've got guests, but uh, if we could do it early, nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. No, we're going skiing on Friday. That's not going to work. Well, you don't have to be here. I don't have to be here. Okay, I'm well, I'm no, excluded. Family, can be here? <coughs> you here? I can be here. Then, you know, okay, eight so o'clock Friday morning. Is that fine, Jim? That would work for me. Done. You're in. Uh, we're done. Okay, eight o'clock Friday morning. <sighs> Old school. Where's my phone when I need it? Um, yeah, you better all be prepared. Uh, and I'll be an hour later for skiing that I would normally want to be. Well, no, fine. it's three. Oh, I don't have to come. I heard three. Yeah. Okay, fine. I, and I, if I absolutely have to, I will. So Could it'll come out on calendar. Yeah. Will it come out on calendar? Yeah. So if, if Friday, Shana, because Shana's really good at getting things. Uh, so Shana, you've got that right. Friday the seventeenth, eight o'clock. Shana, can you send a reminder around on Thursday yeah, too? Shana. Thank you. Is it hot in here? It's warm in here. It is, it is, it is warm in <laughs> here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Roll. Finish, finish strong. Keep going. Okay, we need uh, Pam, corporate officer, too. Yeah, so let's have a motion to appoint Pam, corporate officer, on Friday the 17th or such other day as the special meeting occurs. You were, Peter said just in case. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, so. that's fine. We have that resolution. I remember doing a resolution. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, I had to be a CEO, yeah. and we didn't have sure. No, but that was long ago. Yeah. That was before that was we had... It was last summer. I was away for a month. Mm -hmm. oh, that's right. You had to have been. Yeah. But, but the one that was done, yeah. like, that's just part of my job to be the acting. I have yeah. to be a corporate officer. Okay, Fine. so you get yeah, me a corporate things. officer on Friday if you're not... Okay, so I rescind that motion, uh, and it wasn't seconded, so... Uh, but no the done. motion, we had got a motion to for 8 o'clock on the yeah. 17th. Okay, so uh, we'll take meeting. the motion as spoken. Uh, can I have a second? And any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. Good now? Yes. In, in sorry, terms of yeah, the housekeeping? Yes, I apologize. Well, I, I apologize. Um, the problem. I don't understand. You're acting there. Aren't you? Who's acting there? I think it's you. Who is it? No, I'm at Summer. Uh, that's a good question. Who's the acting mayor? It would be... Oh, it's February. It's B for so Bain. B for Bain. We're going yeah, alphabetical. We didn't start right? in November, did we? we started no, we did. We're doing that's calendar right. now. Okay, done. Did, do we have that taken care of? Uh, yeah, we asked this We, we did a special <coughs> resolution because we had a gap because of Helen's absence. Yeah, no, I did no, that. We're fine. And that was you. And so we did the 2017 acting mayor schedule? I, I think, think I'm pretty sure we, we slotted did. Eileen in for the last quarter. So that'll have to be adjusted. We'll see. I'm sure what we happens. did. Do you want it at a holding resolution just in case? No. No. Fine. Okay. 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 Whew, okay. I love all this Robert's rules of nonsense stuff. Um, request for decision report on the elections procedures amendment <coughs> bylaw 511 of 2017. Professor De Jong, tell us what this is about. This is about some changes that we need to make to our election procedures by law, as we discovered in the course of the most recent election. Um, so if we turn to <coughs> page 121, I'll just go through this really quickly. Um, so that change is per the new every four years in October instead of November. Does that mean the general election is held at a different date than it used to be? It'll be yeah, it'll be the third uh, Saturday of October instead, instead of, of the third Saturday of November, November. Yeah, okay. every four years. Yeah. Um, over the page 3.2, um, nomination documents already includes all the things that were deleted, uh, so we don't need all the superfluous wording. Um, and... Um, <coughs> so then there was just a renumber there, um, a renumbering of the section reference at the top of the page 3.5, um, and 4.3, we changed it from 21 days to 26 days, uh, which is the day on which um, the chief election officer declares whether there's a, an election by voting or, or an acclamation. Um, and 4.4 .4 is we want to provide as much time as possible for mail ballot voting. So it's really dependent on when we get the ballots from the printers. Um, so it's tied to that by the way of this amendment. So the day after we receive the ballots from the printers, 
then we can um, release them to those who have applied. They can apply in advance. Can I just ask you, does, is there a requirement to send them to a printer? We can't just print them off on our printer? Yeah, there's more to it than, than us just doing it. Oh, I've asked this question before. Yeah. Sorry, this, this stops. That's right. Yeah. And they've got to be yeah. the bigger part. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Um, so that's those. There's a uh, section renumbering in there as well. Uh, mail ballot acceptance or rejection. Um, so the purpose of the changes that you see here in 4.9 are to align our procedure with uh, the intent of the challenge provisions in the Local Government Act under Section 126, which is uh, something that really, it, it, would, it was sort of a, there was lots of gaps in the process. It, it wasn't really sort of doing what it was supposed to do. Um, so now it's more of a, a clear process. Um, and then custody and counting of mail, uh, mail ballots. Um, this too is a simplified process and streamlined a little bit. Um, for the most part, uh, per section 4.12, um, there's not going to be 25 mail ballot applicants, but if there are, then they'll have their own separate ballot box. But if there aren't, then they will be added to the ballot box for advanced voting when we begin the counting. Uh, until then, they remain in the custody and care of the chief election officer. But they are de-identified by that time. You've removed the outer secret secrecy envelope. Uh, only to check the certification envelopes, not remove the secrecy envelopes from the certification envelopes. Okay, so you they can still stay, tell who they're from. They will stay in the certification envelopes, um, and then uh, we will take them and, just as we did this election, we opened the secrecy envelopes, took the ballots, pulled them, stuck them inside the um, advanced voting ballot box mm -hmm. okay. so that they would be mixed in. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, everything else is... Okay, so I, uh, we discussed this. I looked for my notes that I sent you and I could not find them either. So the only things that I noticed as a candidate last time was under the election signs thing, and that was the, the part where you're not allowed to put them with three meters of a roadway and all that stuff, which couldn't be achieved in Lions Bay. So Peter struck that. The other point, the only other one that I could remember was 5.2G, election sign size. Right now we allow three square meters. That's a sign um, three meters long by one meter wide, for example, quite large. Do we want to allow that, or do we want to restrict it, or do we not care? I don't care. I mean, you know, I, I noticed in the West Van by election that they just had, there were some people who took full of This is a West Van. The, the big guy yeah. who did the big sign. And it made him look a little more <coughs> like he meant it. So, you know, somebody with deeper pockets will put up a bigger sign and, and maybe get some sort of unfair advantage in Lions Bay. Do we want to massage it to the extent that we're limited to, say, one square meter, or do we just leave it? For the most part, most people used to use the same size signs. But you're going to get some deep-pocketed no, uh, uh, tech that. entrepreneur. He's, I, he's going to oh, buy the election. On, <coughs> he's been doing total domination of Lions Bay and providing our scatter system. Mm -hmm. Exactly. For example, for example, he may want to get a contract. But you wouldn't allow that, would you? So that's not going to happen. I'm not going anywhere near this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm glad to hear that. you're still listening. <laughs> I, I don't see the I don't see the difficulty in 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 saying one sign size and that's it. I really don't see that. But the guy, as a candidate, I sure as heck wasn't going to spend, you know, big huge amounts of money for signs. I did what I thought, and. Was, and we all did. I think pretty much everybody. Our old signs were pretty much all the same size. Pretty much. Right. Yeah, the other way you can look at it is: Do you do you want to regulate artistic license? <coughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> Showing a nod, I would prefer to leave it as it is. Fine. Okay. The only other one was uh, the section, the new section five point four. I miss. I read this five times and always got it wrong until Peter explained. He actually meant the municipality. So right now. The village means the municipality. You will require that we have a policy in place that we're trying to replace in bylaws the terminology the village, which means the people in the place, with the terminology <coughs> the municipality. But because we're going for first, second, and third reading on this, we have to have that amendment in here now, if we so instruct staff to do. 
What I would like to move, is it move or just suggest that uh, we replace the, the, the concept village by municipality? That would then make 5.4 make more sense, for example. So are you making a motion that uh, wherever the word village appears, including the definition section, uh, that it be stricken and replaced with a definition for municipality and replace the word village with the word municipality? Although we do have the name of the bylaw is the Village of Lions Bay Election Procedures Bylaw. Yeah, except for that village. Except for that. I couldn't put it better myself. <coughs> Would anybody care to second that motion? Nobody cares. Now, there's a policy in place, remember. Is it actually in place? Yeah. Or is it something that you've requested that we try no, to do? No, I think do? it's in place. So you may want to just rely on that. I don't know that it's... Uh, it was one of the first things we did. But wouldn't the reference to the municipality... I mean, I understand the reference, but the thing is that everything here talks to the village of Lions Bay. So the village in, in this bylaw, the word village means municipality. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Basically, so it's the village. So then, why today. why do we need to change it? Because it's confusing. Well, I, I think for for those of us who've been here for a while, the village of Lions Bay is the village, yeah. and it, it's got sort of affection to the name to it. Yeah. Um, there's something more cozy about living in the village than the municipality. Yes, but that's the whole point. So yeah. we live in the village. But this means the, the municipality's signage. See, you didn't get it. So it's, if the municipality wants to put up um, election signage, then they don't have to comply with 5.2 and 5.3. So y you've just made my point. Well, I thought I made the opposite point. In other words, yeah. this place, this government, is the government of the village of Lions Bay. Uh, it's not just the people in place. I mean, I, I take it that's what a village does mean, but the village is part of our name as well, and we just abbreviate it to the village and lock off, knock off of Lions Bay because we're in the village right now. We don't need the off Lions Bay when we're talking within our boundaries. So it's just everybody who's spent time here just thinks that this is the village. So are you talking, when you're saying that, are you talking about the government or the place? Oh. So we've got the people, the place, and the government. The government. Yeah. And I think what Councillor Bain is saying, it can mean all three, and the third would be a softer, gentler <coughs> corporate entity, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right. So sections 5.2 and 5.3 do not apply to the village. So, so what, what does that section 5.4 mean to you? Time on it. Oops, sorry, but of, of the three potential meanings, it can't possibly mean the people or the place. It has to be taken in context to mean the corporation. What I thought that meant was you weren't allowed to put a sign up in the village. And I read this. Surely it doesn't mean that. No, I don't take it as that. So what do you take it to mean? I think it more is the, the village government in this context. Because in the definition of the village, it is the corporation of the district of West... Uh, uh, sorry, wrong, wrong employer. <gasps> wow. Why are you being rubbing off on me? <laughs> yeah, no blame. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That's Freudian. Yeah, okay, it was 30 years ago. Same yeah. one thing. <laughs> so, this doesn't mean to you, as it, when I read it the first five times, doesn't mean to you that we're not allowed to do that in the village. No. It means only the village is not allowed to do that in the village. The village is allowed to do certain things in the village, but this is not one of them. Yeah, this is one of them. It doesn't apply to the village government you might put on there. To me, it's assumed. <laughs> do you want to amend that motion to village government? I, I wouldn't no, I would support the, that one. village means the village of Lions Bay. That's it. Because it's in the definition. Done. The municipality. That's our, that's, a, that's, our, that's our official name in the letters patent is the village of Lions Bay. It's, yes, not, not, the, not, the it's not the municipality of the village of Lions <coughs> Bay. You should change our letterhead, by the way. Now, 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 now we're micromanaging everything into the, into the nth degree. This is, this is, I'm sorry, this is silly, okay? The village is the village is the village. Village of Lions Bay. 
the village, the corporate entity, the village of Lions Bay. Are you suggesting we move on? Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so uh, there's an unseconded motion. What do we do about that? If nobody seconds it, it dies. It dies. No, no vote. No vote. Okay, fine. Um, can I register my uh, uh, contention that you'll be sorry that we did it that way because it'll come up. Because somebody's going to read this, a candidate, and they're going to ask every time. I think the tape recorder picked you up. Okay, good. It's on the record. Okay, so um, with no amendments then to the signage size or the definition of the village, which is the government in this place, uh, can I have a motion for first, second, and third reading? Thanks. And a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Um, and we will move to the sewer parcel tax bylaw number 108. 1992 repeal bylaw number 512 of 2017 adoption. We have given this first, second, and third in one setting. So this is the mere adoption. So I don't believe we need to discuss it, but I need a motion. And a second. All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Same again for. Um, Secondary suite bylaw. <coughs> it's the surcharge bylaw. Yeah, yes. not, not the secondary suite bylaw. Correct. Yeah. This allows us to charge fees in the sewer. Yeah. Okay, so this is adoption as well, right, Pam? Correct. Yeah, okay, so we've done first, second, and third on this. Yes, Can I have a motion for adoption of secondary suite surcharge bylaw number 513 of 2017 and second? All in favor? Opposed? That carries. And I believe that's it for that part. We'll move to correspondence. Ron, you want to do the honors? Thank you. Um, <coughs> let's go with the resident ones first, starting with, uh, since let's go R3 and go backwards up the chain. So Marcus and Brigida. Brigida, of course, was here. And it's the same uh, letter that she provided. Uh, my recommendation here is that clearly the CAO and the public works manager engaged that uh, one of them give her a call tomorrow to say we chatted about it and that it is in our laps. Uh, that's correct, right? I mean, you, I know you guys are working on it. Uh, you will bring a proposition to council when the time comes, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, you already did, uh, and we instructed. Remind me. I think we instructed staff to. Look at it some more, and I know you guys have been meeting about it. Yeah, we we may proceed with certain preliminary steps in, in terms of what um, the owner may be required to do in any event, um, which will provide further information, which will inform further decision making. So it may not come to back to council immediately. Not in the minutia, uh, but uh, yeah, ultimately we'll we'll be coming back to you to advise of of what options exist and uh, what the pros and cons of each are and what our recommendations are. Okay. I think you spoke about getting a sample of the uh, sump water. That is an option. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that it's uh, as something that we want to do. No, I think um, we can leave that up to you. Uh, the main thing that's changed now that may have not been the case before is there's the public information piece, communications piece around that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you may want to come up with a channel that doesn't mean you have to send out letters every time. but and, yeah. and use our normal channels, but in the end it will be an official letter. But before we get to that point, we may even need a, a public information meeting. May. It's contentious, especially mm -hmm. down Brunswick. You know, there's, there's, uh, there's any number of residents there who feel that they may have gotten the short end of the stick during their amalgamation with Lions Bay. So... But it's also one of the oldest areas of the village, and the potential for problems, cross-contamination, whatever, with water 
is, is huge. The lots are much smaller, so the septic plumes are for sure. My septic plume is going under your your house. That's for sure. So yeah, we have to be exceptionally yeah. sensitive there. Yeah. yeah, and the water table is six inches below the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I know you guys are on it. So uh, proceed and let us know what's happening there. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, uh, R2, Trudy, and this is about the flags at half mass, which little bit I know I was going to open a can of worms, but I can see in the mayor's raging quest for power, he may now have the ability to have the flags lowered Apparently. if we approve it's, the policy. I have, I, oh, it's not a community theory, a charter, right? Oh, yeah. I think Peter's coming forward. I can't even change policy. the word. There we go. So I think on that one, no response on that one. Uh, Louis Peterson, R1. Um, uh, this is uh, more stuff to uh, go to the report that's already that we've already seen about the uh, zoning bylaw in the public forum. So I think I can go on. Um, I think this one is uh, just a picked a pile off to write them and say with thanks. I really did. Thank you. I'm after you. Ditto. Good. So we're done with that. Yeah. Uh, moving up to the uh, Air Quality Symposium, which is March, the, this is G3, uh, which is March the 14th, 10.30 to 2.30. Uh, I don't know if they're serving 400 paddlers, but lunch is available. Yeah, I would go to this uh, in a heartbeat. I'm not going to be here, so uh, can I have a volunteer to go and represent Lions Bay in this one? This one is a more meaty uh, House Arm Community Forum. You know, air quality is an issue in in Hassan, but this is a fairly um, sort of quasi-governmental body that we pay dues to and that we need to be represented on. Anybody? Thanks, Ron. Uh, I, I would go. I mean, this kind of stuff that I'm interested in, but I'm not going to be here. Yeah, it's like the skiing next Friday. <laughs> well, I am going skiing. There you go. I'm going skiing this Friday too. Thank you. Uh, this will be the you owe me one on that one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, G two notice of taxi license application to pass. A very fascinating piece on this one. Who knew? Uh, I guess we do want more uh, taxis in the thing. They're asking for feedback. Let me just quickly go to my notes here. My feedback is put us on the map and we'll give you feedback. Uh, <coughs> I, yeah, I think that my comment was no taxi service where we are now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, providing comments seems just, you know, a little trite to me. Yeah. So that's an NR. Unless anybody wants to uh, produce some comments and send them in. I, it always gets my goat when people produce maps uh, that don't include us. Well, yeah. and we're Like Metro. Anyway. Okay. So that, let, let it go. Last one, uh, the G1, another <coughs> fascinating one, which is the Let's Talk housing report, a very topical kind of thing. Although certainly uh, Mayor Masato wrote this uh, as his colleagues in Metro and the big cities do, from a very big city perspective with lots of opportunities, none of which apply to us. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. If I could be so blunt. Uh, so, like, to bottom line this, I like it in spirit, and it covers a whole bunch of things, but as I see this, unless you correct me, Mayor and CEO, we're kind of stranded here by ourselves trying to find our own solution, and I don't think any of this works. No, so, NR in that one. And back to you. Okay, thank you very much. That's good. Everybody good with that? So I'll take a motion to receive all correspondence uh, in one fell swoop. Thanks. And a second. All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Uh, no action resulting from that, so nothing needs to go there. Oh, I thought there was a thank you note to Louis or something. No, I already did that. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so uh, new business. Award of contract for water modeling works. Ah, that's what that is. Page 169. So the recommendation is that you advise engineering. Those are the people who did the water modeling on the IMP, right? That yeah, is uh, correct. Just yeah. to be awarded the water modeling project and blah, blah, blah. No, I guess I have to say it. That mayor and corporate office would be authorized to execute contract documents according to first point two of the water distribution system modeling proposal submitted by GAE. Does the report tell us the budget impact? It's included in the it's water in the budget, right. and um, with the proviso that if we're successful with the grant, this is something we can actually right cover off. under the grant, so we yeah. would then be favorable, but we, um, uh, we have budgeted for it. 
Very good. And I liked everything they said in there, including the potential for uh, re-evaluating the need and purpose of my favorite uh, water tank down here. So uh, as, you, as you probably imagine, I was looking for that. Any, uh, any, we don't have a motion yet, but it will take the discussion now. Anything? Ron? Uh, lesson learned from the IMP when it says, uh, you know, senior partner, project manager, modeling expert, uh, that's who we want. And if, I, I can't guide staff on this one, but if it ain't turning out, put your hand up fast. Absolutely. Yeah, the contract will stipulate that we will get the personnel in their proposal. Absolutely. And there'll be no bait and switches. No, our intent is to meet with the uh, the owner of the company uh, to go over the modeling that was done already and some shortfalls that staff have found with that model, correct the model, and then move forward with these exercises. Shortfalls as in mistakes or just inadequate uh, constants? Uh, there, there are some numbers that were pumped out by the model that staff don't um, believe are accurate. So we will sit down with him, go over exactly what staff's concerns are, and then ensure that it is correct. It may, it may simply mean that the model is correct. Staff just don't understand the numbers and, and why they're there. So. And I, know, I see that you are doing the chlorine residual thing as well. Uh, will, will that go up no, to... No, we are not doing the chlorine residual. That's, oh, you're not doing the project three? No. This is just for project one and two. And so project three, the chlorine thing, would, would potentially be a later project? Uh, we discussed this at, a, at the ISC, IC meeting, and it was decided that it wasn't uh, a valuable exercise. Um, for $10,000, we can do it. but um, Yeah, for $10,000. The point here being, uh, Council, to remind you, the point was that we're, we get uh, quite a few complaints about high chlorine smell and taste at the, at the beginning of the system because we have to have high dosage to maintain uh, adequate residuals all the way to the end. Yeah, I believe we talked about that and, and the notion of, of tracking where those complaints are coming from and whether they're directly uh, after a, a turbidity event which necessitates high chlorine yeah. or... so Just run of the mill? Yeah. But, but it, I mean, it, there's plenty of places without even that problem, you know, uh, high, high retention times that do uh, mid-network chlorine injection. But we have booster stations, correct. A booster station will run you about two hundred thousand dollars. <coughs> not not including the additional sampling and whatever else that'll be required through Metro. It's a significant ask. Um, establishing the the volume of complaints that we're getting and tying them to a specific date or event would help in determining. I think we're too too premature for that. I would just like to add, I would like to see um, that we also consider whether any of these complaints come from areas so, so close to a dead end in our system, mm -hmm. where we know there's a couple of places where things should have been done differently when they built it, mm -hmm. and we've got dead ends there, and, that, and subsequently chlorine levels do have to be elevated to make sure that nothing happens in those particular areas. We have submitted through the budget supplemental process a, uh, an ask to um, test out automatic flushing. Yeah. Uh, so we will try those in two locations. I'd love to chat with you to find out where those are mm -hmm. that we can try those out on. Yeah, well, bottom value. Okay. Yeah, I think that's one and, 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 and Brunswick is the other one. Brunswick is the other one, that's okay. right. <coughs> Okay, that's good. Um, so really all we're asking for is council's uh, permission to enter into this contract. So I've, uh, I guess I better read the motion. I've read the motion adequately, I believe. Have I? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's what I said. I, I don't believe we've had a second though, so can I have one of those? Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Okay, good. So where are we now? Um, that was it. Uh, oh, did we want to? Uh, do we want to amend the agenda further to discuss the um, the canoe? Oh yeah, yeah. Thing. Yeah, we do. So, can I have a motion to amend the agenda to add uh, an item twelve B? Thanks, and a second. And all in favor? Opposed? That carries. So, the pulling together canoe journey. You all here. Uh, let's uh, let's hear what people think.
Fred, starting with you. Um, getting to the point at budget time, I hate spending money, but it seems like a worthwhile endeavor, a good fellowship on the community, and um, get you back on the map, as it were. Um, yeah, I'm fine with it. In, in the complete ask? Yeah, so the asks, yeah. so let's just summarize. And the asks are giving them quasi-exclusive uh, use of the beach for two hours on a Thursday in the middle of summer, but not completely exclusive. Anybody's welcome. Mm -hmm. um, sighting of porta potties, which they would pay for. $1,500 worth of lunch, either cash cash or catered. But I think I've got the sense that they'd prefer us to you know, arrange it too. But I guess we could do something. We could put on lunch for 400 people. For fifteen hundred dollars, not uh, not. Don't go crazy here because you need manpower for that. Well, we'd have to have volunteers, yeah. So that would be a sort of a, we'd have to add it to somebody's thing, like events committee or something. Uh, and moving the boom. Is that is that correct? Those are the yeah. only asks. So it's per and and things like waiving parking. You should probably give them the CN parking for the four yeah. hour period so, kind yeah, of thing, so that because otherwise they're all over the place. What are yeah. we doing? And I would say, as part of what we're pounding on, is closing the beach washroom. Or closing the toilet portion of it. I, guess I they, wholeheartedly agree. They yeah. can use the I basin. Uh, they can do their thing with the porta-potties. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, we would yeah. inundate the system. Absolutely. We may have to put water fountains out or something. But this is going to cost more than 1500 So. Well, let's go 2500 to round up high. Okay, if, if that's another thing. Well, you're right. We need to... Uh, water containers for sure. I mean, I mean, if you're going to do it, do it. Got to do it first class, so it's got to look right, not just. We're either going to do it or we're not. So, uh, so the question is, do it, and those are sort of, I think, the parameters, or not do it. I think that's the, the choice before us. What do you say? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think it's worthwhile myself um, for a number of reasons. Uh, um, the the least of which is the whole thing going on around House Sound right now. I think that we need to be part of part of this and a, a, de, a noted destination. It's good for everybody, and I think this is a really good thing for all the communities participating, and especially us. So I think we should completely. Okay, thanks. Uh, I uh, I'm 100 percent on this one. I think that I put forward the 2,500. Uh, yes, for the central. I thought actually the Doing it in Brunswick would probably present more logistical problems than yeah. pluses. For road access reasons? You know, <coughs> right, yeah. And just, so well. it's just a parking and a, it's confusing if you haven't been there and yada, yada, yada. But once you're on the beach, it's lovely, but then even like serving food is a problem. So, um, yes, uh, the 12 to 1 o'clock is not really onerous, so allowing for set up an hour before and clean up an hour after. <coughs> Four hours midday on a Thursday, I think our residents can suck it up, and I think it would be nice. And I don't know how we do this with the uh, uh, with our extensive public relations department that we uh, reach out to those that were quick to lob the grenades and to find a way to spin this better. Grenades in terms of? Well, there's Lions Bay again, and F Fred's first point. Uh, it's put some happiness back in the village. Yeah. And we don't have a media to do that, so we'd have to go, I mean, they're coming from Squamish, they're going to Ambleside. So, what, the competition... Well, Porto, they're, they're overnighting at Porto that night. Okay, so Squamish, they've already been there, so they've already beaten that drum, so to speak. Yeah. And then the North Shore News is probably going to capture Ambleside. So, maybe we should think this would be a good opportunity to invite the TV networks out. Something like that, yeah. So, I, I mean, I think we need a plan around this. Uh, catering, uh, PR, uh, you know, both PR to the village and sort of wider. Um, you know, maybe do some sort of... Uh, I like their video, actually. You know, uh, that was the winner for me. Yeah. Um, it's also pretty cool. It's cool. Okay, so I'm, I, I'm obviously I'm, I'm exactly the same mind. I'm, I'm very pleased to hear that we're all of the same mind. That's uh, that's quite gratifying. So um, I think what, now, if we had a community portfolio person, we would assign this to them to think it through. 
We don't. I think the events committee would find themselves tapped out. Well, it's right after Canada Day, so they're going to go a resounding no. Yeah, you know, we're going to need tents, and we're going to need stuff. tables, and we're going to need chairs, and we're going to need stuff. I'll do it. I'll, I'll put no. the master. I'll do the master plan. No. Okay, then who? I would do it, and I'm not begging for this. Not you have you. I would rather you dealt with uh, Goldsmith, Jones, or Sturdy, and got the TV cameras in here. Well, yeah, the media actually owes us a bit of a favor now, having. Um, well, I mean. There's Mean Mayor Burr. Yeah. Okay. Well. So, so I would, I'd re if you took that piece on, I will work out the rest, in with the assistance of staff, the mm -hmm. blue sky this till we can. Okay. Good. Because you sort of did the Canada Day thing, uh, <coughs> regardless. Yeah. Okay. This is this is so, somewhat up so, your street. Yes, but my comeuppance on this is that for the rest of the other community stuff, I'm looking across the table to my colleagues as these other splinter groups. Uh, there needs to be a master plan, otherwise it's going well, to way, We want it first class, so yeah. we need a deal here. Okay, good. So I think we'll take... Uh, do you have adequate text for a motion? Or shall I give you a motion? So I'll move that uh, we accept uh, the request of... Uh, sorry, what's the name of the group again? The Pulling Together Canoe Journey uh, organizers with uh, permission, fee-free permission to use Lions Bay Beach from about 11 o'clock to about 1 o'clock on Thursday, July 13th, um, to provide a contact person to keep council up to date, namely Councillor McLaughlin, to um, fund, to host a luncheon up to $2,500, and to put together a, a PR campaign facing both the village and the wider world, including media. Uh, in, in adequate time. In-kind donation, with that 2500 include in-kind donation, that's public works time to put up tents, that kind of stuff, or would we just put, just use time for that? Okay, so that's 2500 cash. Yeah. I'd say the 2500 was the entire cost, not just the lunch, because there will be a cost involved in moving the boom. That and the boom, yeah, there will be some time yeah. there. So, so let's. It's a total budget of twenty five hundred, including the lunch and. Because, because we have to pay the marina to get three that. grand. Well, no, I think that's well, getting up there. Well, twenty five hundred, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That includes uh, the marina. <coughs> they'll probably charge us five hundred to move the booms out and back again. Wow. We could talk to them. They may donate. No. They, yeah, they 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 donate. We'll, we'll, we'll push. We'll push Cam to donate. Well, that's going to be your. Well, okay. Fine. Yeah. They, all they need to do is take two of those pieces of the pins boat, off and take the off. pins up and pull them around. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Tie them back off. So we need a boat for half an hour, twice. Yeah, yeah they've got a work boat. Yeah. Yeah, they'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fine. We don't need to resolve on closing the washroom, so I won't put that in the motion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the motion in concept. Can I have a second? That's a second, thanks. Any further discussion? All in favor? Post that carries. So, uh, as soon as he wrote to me, I'll be the person with the uh, glad duty of, of saying that he's on. Can you forward him my yeah, stuff? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll say on behalf of council. Oh. Okay, that's great. Well done. Uh, that's cool. Well done, council. So, public questions and comments. Got to say something. It's a requirement. Thanks for being here. Good. That's from out. <coughs> okay, so now uh, we're going to close the meeting. So thanks for being here. Now everybody leave. So uh, I will now move that we close the meeting under sections 91C and E and 92B and ask that people who should not be here aren't here. Uh, I guess I'll need a second on that. Thanks. And all in favor? Opposed? That carries. Okay, so uh, reporting out from the closed meeting, uh, matters were discussed pertaining to the reasons for the closing thereof, and with that I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the regular meeting of council. Thank you. And a second. All in favor? Opposed? That carries at 10.13.